So I was doing a lecture today with a, one of my students, actually a tutoring student. So it wasn't so much a lecture as it was a review, but we were going over the endocrine system. Um, one of the things that comes up all the time is SIADH and DI. And it comes up because it can be a little bit of a cloudy idea, a cloudy concept of what's happening. Um, but I promise you that I'm going to try to make this video short and sweet and painless and easy so you can understand the difference between the two. Now, I just want to say the endocrine system is definitely one of those things that nursing students don't really like, you know, in nursing school. It, it's a very um, busy system. There's a lot of hormones to remember, a lot of functions to remember, the glands, you know, locations, things of that nature. But one of the things that I always like to try to encourage is that if you can master one, then you can master the other. And what I mean by that is the endocrine system, as far as the hormone functions, when it's either too much or it's too little, what you're going to see is just complete opposites. So you're going to see opposite symptoms. You're going to see opposite signs. So as an example, if you're able to master the concept of hyperthyroidism, then know that hypothyroidism is just the complete opposite of everything that you know about hyper. Uh, same thing for something like Cushing's. If you're able to master Cushing's disease, then just know that Addison's disease, which is the opposite, is going to be the exact opposite signs and symptoms that you see in Cushing's. And that, that idea is the same thing that you can apply to SIADH and DI. Now we know that SIADH stands for Syndrome of Inappropriate Antidiuretic Hormone, and DI stands for Diabetes Insipidus. Now, diabetes insipidus is not related to diabetes mellitus, so don't confuse the two. They're, they're very different. So let's backtrack a little bit. I drew a picture of pituitary gland. My best picture, I'm not Picasso. So this is a pituitary gland. Um, and A is for our anterior and P is for our posterior. Now we know that ADH is secreted from our pituitary gland, right? Now, syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone and diabetes insipidus, they're both issues with ADH. So let's kind of make a little guide to both. The difference is, is that in SIADH, there is too much. So here's my up arrow, too much antidiuretic hormone being secreted. In DI, it's the complete opposite. It's too little and in some cases, none at all. Now let's remember what ADH does. Antidiuretic hormone, just, just thinking about the med term itself, antidiuretic against diuresis. This is our, our don't pee, don't pee hormone. This is what controls how much uh, reabsorption of water is happening at the level of the kidneys and how much we're actually excreting out. So with that said, if we are excreting too much antidiuretic hormone, that means that too much of our don't pee, don't pee, don't pee happening. Well, if we are not peeing, then where's the water going, right? So this is, this is just the easiest way to think about it. So what are you gonna see in syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone? Well, the first thing is you're hanging on to too much water, right? So that means you're gonna have an increase of fluid. And fluid I mean in the body, right? So this is going to end up being a fluid volume excess, okay? Now, I'm gonna just kind of list out the signs and symptoms you're gonna see in the patient, and I want you to think about what this means, you know, what this is going to turn into, what other things this is gonna manifest to. So you have too much fluid on board and syndrome of anti, syndrome of inappropriate, excuse me, antidiuretic hormone, right? Too much fluid, you have a fluid volume excess, Someone that has fluid volume excess, well, what are you gonna see in that person? Edema, right? Someone that has too much fluid on board, has fluid volume excess, has got edema, what about their blood pressure? What are you gonna notice in that? Increase, right? They're gonna have high blood pressure in relation to the fact that they have a lot of fluid on board. Now, if we jump over here to DI for a second, because remember, this is the complete opposite. We have too little antidiuretic hormone being secreted, or in some cases, nothing at all. In that case, instead of the body hanging on to that, that fluid, and by fluid, I wanna be clear, I mean water. 
We're not talking about solutes. We're just talking about the water, okay? Um, so if we have too much fluid in our syndrome of antidiuretic hormone, which by the way, means that we have decreased urine output. Decrease or none at all because we've been hanging on to it. And DI, we're going to have decreased fluid because we have increase in urine output. And when I say increase, these clients or patients that are suffering from DI are dumping very large amounts of urine at one time. We're talking up to three liters. So that's a lot of fluid being lost, right? If here, SIADH, we had a fluid volume excess, well then in DI, what do we have? We have the opposite. We have a fluid volume deficit, okay? So and in this instance with SIADH, if we had edema, well in this instance, this person's actually going to look dry, right? They're gonna look dehydrated. You might even notice that they have sunken eyes. Okay, they're looking really dried out. Because they are dumping so much fluid out, because the urine output is increased, right? They're going to be thirsty. Constantly thirsty because they're losing all of this fluid. Now these are just some of the common, you know, signs and symptoms that we're gonna see in both of these cases. And let's go ahead and compare our BP while we're here. In this case, we had increased BP because there's a lot of fluid. Well, in this case, we're gonna have decreased BP because we're losing so much of it. Now, what I wanna to get to, something that's really important in this case is what happens to our sodium levels because the changes in sodium that we see in SIADH and DI is what's really critical. Now, at SIADH, we have low sodium, hyponatremia, okay? And DI, we have high sodium. And I think this is the part that gets a little bit tricky, and I'll tell you why this happens. Remember, this antidiuretic hormone that's being secreted, the reabsorption of the water, the too much dumping of the water, it's fluid alone, it's not solute. So this is the best way to explain it. This is how the best way I think to explain it anyway. So I'm gonna draw a cup. So here's my cup, I got a cup here, and I'm gonna put a cup over here so you can see the difference between the sodium levels. Now in this cup, because I know I have SIADH, I'm gonna fill my cup with water because that's a problem, right? SIADH, I have too much fluid. In this cup, I know that I keep dumping out my fluid, out my water, so I'm gonna make my cup just have a little bit of water in it, okay? And so now I'm gonna throw in some sodium solutes in there. So here's some sodium in this one. And I'm gonna draw some sodium in this one. Now if we're looking at it, which one do you think has a higher concentration of sodium? And if you look clearly at it, you can see, well, obvious, right? We're looking at this. This has a higher concentration of sodium in it. The reason why is because the amount of water versus the amount of sodium solutes is very uneven. There is a higher concentration of sodium than there is water to dilute that. But in this instance, in our SIADH, we have too much water that's diluting our sodium. So as a result, they become hyponatremic. Whereas in this case, there's not enough water, but there's a lot of sodium, so they become hypernatremic. So what this is what I want you to think about is the signs and symptoms that you need to be aware of or things that your patients are gonna complain of that have low sodium and that have high sodium. So we know that you know uh, when sodium gets out of range, now we need to look out for signs and symptoms of that, confusion, dizziness, lethargy, seizures, coma, you know, and this is what's, that, what can happen as a result of these things. Now, if you wanted to talk about treatment for a second, what are the things that we have to remember for both of these? So let me just change the color so we can see something different here. So let's talk about treatment, and we'll talk about treatment for both. And it's pretty, pretty simple. If this person who has SIADH has too much fluid on board, right, not peeing enough, what do we want to do? 
we want to get rid of the fluid. So something like a diuretic, right? A diuretic we can use to try to get that fluid off board. This person that has SAADH is definitely going to be on fluid restrictions. We don't want to put more fluid on board when we know that's already an issue. So fluid restrictions, a diuretic to help get that fluid off board. And then of course, for both of these, always treat the underlying cause. Excuse my handwriting, it's late. Okay, now by treating the underlying cause, it means what's the issue? Do we have a tumor? in the pituitary gland that's causing hyper or hypersecretion? Um, is there an infection going on? Uh, did we take a drug that's causing it? So whatever caused the issue in the first place, we always wanna treat that. And then in DI, just a brief little overview on treatment of that, think about the exact same thing that we talked about, the opposite. So if I'm dumping too much fluid, right, because I'm having a great amount of urine output, then what if I gave a synthetic? ADH because that that would be the point right I want to give something to try to hang on to the fluid so we can give something like a DDAVP for example a synthetic ADH that way we can hang on to that fluid um, this person that's losing so much fluid is not going to be on fluid restrictions but more like fluid replacement because we want to keep them adequately hydrated okay so in a nutshell, this is SIADH versus DI. Remember, they're both issues of the antidiuretic hormone. One is secreting too much, which is this guy here, SIADH, and one is secreting too little or none at all, which is this guy here, DI. And so the symptoms are opposite. The signs are opposite. Too much fluid with SIADH on board. DI, not enough fluid. We're dumping it out versus SIADH, we're hanging on to it. So we have a fluid volume excess in SIADH, we have a fluid volume deficit in DI, we are edematous in SIADH, we're dry and dehydrated in DI. Our blood pressure is gonna be elevated because of the fluid volume excess that we have in SIADH, but in DI, we're gonna have low BP, right? Sodium level, what's really critical about the two, low sodium in SIADH, because it's too diluted with the water we have on board versus DI is going to have a high sodium level, okay? And the treatments based off of the symptoms, based off of the signs that we're seeing. We wanna get rid of the fluid, right? We don't wanna put more on board if that's our issue. And then the big thing for everything is to treat the underlying cause. And the treat the underlying cause is really something that we can apply everywhere in nursing. We always wanna know what it is that's causing the issue. Okay, so if you have any more questions on this, please let me know. I promised that I would do a quick little overview on SADH versus DI. You know where you can reach me. You can reach me on Instagram at tootrn, T-O-O-T-R-N. You can always email me or visit me on my website, www.tootrn.com. And I hope you found this helpful. Talk to you later.